Well, hello, my friends. This is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. And I am so happy. I'm so happy that you stopped by. You know I enjoy your company. <laughs> and I look forward to our just, to our fellowship. As we just enjoy, I don't know, what's going on. Well, I can tell you what's going on with me. I want to take just a few minutes before we get started. I didn't want this episode to be knit or crochet as usual. I'm sure, like me, you have been watching the news and you see all the devastation and all the destruction. So many of our, well, distant family or friends, people we don't know, but yet they're still, they're still family. You know, there's still people, and it has just been overwhelming just for us to watch. I can't imagine how it must feel to be there. But as I started this episode, I wanted to send out a heartfelt that we're with you, that we hold you in our hearts and our spirit and in our prayers, and that you're not alone. And we as the rest of the world, will do our best to, you know, to send what we can to help you through this, this moment in time, to get through all of this that's coming against you and, and that's just caused so much heartache and sorrow. So, as I was working on the next, this project that I'm going to share with uh, you, it just hit me, you know, just like I said, I was watching news as I was knitting, and I would just stop right in the middle of things, and it just, I, the name of the stitch is called Print of the Wave. And I thought, you know, that, that water, the waves, that water was meant to destroy and devastate and to some instance kill. But hence the song Amazing Grace. Grace comes at a time just when you need it. It comes to restore and uplift. And I just wanted to send a heartfelt, just some heartfelt words to let you know that we are hoping and sending our best to you. It's amazing grace. So, the sweater, well, first of all, I kept, promising so many of my YouTube uh, friends, oh, I'm going to do the print of the wave sweater in September. Stay tuned. I'm going to do the print of the wave stitch in September. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, you know, if you look on my Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam banner, you'll see this lavender sweater with this particular stitch on it. I use it as my intro banner. And course I did that sweater several years ago I didn't know I was gonna be on the YouTube I, just, I was just making it for myself and of course I don't even remember how you made the sweater and of course I'm not that same size anymore either <laughs> so I thought well I'll just make a new sweater and make it to my size now <laughs> and just enjoy sharing it with my friends on the YouTube so I'm going to walk you through step by step, like I say, and, uh, you know, just just share what I'm thinking as we just sit and chat and, you know, because like I said, you know I love your company. <laughs> but this is Jay's Knit After the Storm Lace Sweater. I know right now, with the storm raging, but there will be an After the Storm on down the road. So as we knit together and share and um, you know just I hope you enjoy this stitch as much as I do. So without further ado are you ready to enjoy this stitch with me? Let's get started on Jay's Knit After the Storm Lace Sweater. Just for my friends on the YouTube. See you in just a minute. 
Well, now here is an overview of this pretty lace sweater. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that look luscious like those grapes on the calendar? <laughs> you know, I'm still using that as my inspiration. That beautiful calendar from the Houtman Brothers collection. Oh, so pretty. And just the nature, how pretty it is. And hence, I thought this would just be just perfect. The perfect color, the perfect stitch, and the perfect simple little sweater. Because you know I'm all about simple. <laughs> okay, so let me walk you through an overview. Because I really want to get through this one and uh, so we can get to uh, knitting and, and uh, you know, go ahead and get this lace done. First of all, as you can see, this is pretty much in the same um, uh, same type of sweater as um, Jay's, you know, when I did the knit feather and fan uh, stitch sweater. It's, everything is pretty much just like, just like that sweater, but we, of course, have a different, um, you know, a different lace to put in the front, in the center. And uh, as you can see, I added a few beads and everything. But let's go, let's just take it from the bottom as we always do. Here is the front of the sweater, but now we will, we will start. We will start at the very bottom edge. Just want to make sure I'm on camera. What is it? Can you see that? Okay. We're going to start at the very bottom edge right here. And simply, um, we will do it in two pieces. Now, if you're a seasoned knitter and you, you still prefer to do it all in one piece, since the one I just finished was in one piece, you know, sometimes you need to give a, a person a break or a break yourself from so much, you know, such a large piece of fabric to work with, you know, flipping it back and forth. and dry. Okay, this is two pieces. <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, especially for new knitters, Yes, you have to, you know, do a little more sewing, but you can get the gist of things, I think, a lot quicker because you can see how two pieces will come together and where you need to sew it up, and voila, you're pretty much done. So, we start here on the bottom. When we get ready to uh, work our um, formula and everything, on my bottom edge, I did, like, uh, just two rows of knitting. But now, uh, several of you said, Jay, I just can't stand the way that rolls. It really does roll with, you know, of course, I've steamed mine, so it's not rolling now. But it may, you know, if I ever wash it or whatever. So, you'll get an option to either do two rows or four rows. We'll discuss all of that. But it starts at the bottom, on the front. And my tip is, as I was sharing the needles, get two needles. You know, I just use simple needles. You can use any brand you want to. I don't get into that. Whatever brand you want. You would never know that I knit this on an inexpensive brand. I knit, you know, either clover or just whatever. I, I have so many needles. But uh, get the same brand. Get at least two. Because I'm going to suggest to you, especially for new people, to not be able to get bogged down and get in the syndrome of, oh, man, i got to start at the back. If you work them the same... Work them both the same up to the arm space. You will be so happy. <laughs> so, as we're working up, we're going to work this sweater. You know, that's, not, that's my first step is do the bottom, bottom edge. The next step is to get up to your arm space. And let me see which side am I on. Let's see, can I back out just a little bit to see the arm space. Okay, so the next thing is to get up to your arm space your underarm where you're gonna we will be adding sleeves to this sweater just like I said just like we did the feather and fan and just like we just finished on the, the Shetland fern sweater except we'll be doing it on you know it's done in two pieces but here's a nice side here's where we've added sleeves and then I have a nice seam a nice just really nice invisible seam that you don't even see and then I have the little garter ridges on the sleeve so that I didn't have to pick up any extra stitches when I was done. It has its own little edging, so that's taken care of. Don't have to do that. 
And then eventually you have to work up to where you need the neck to stop, the, the pattern, the lace. So after you do the sleeves, these, these are the steps now. This is how we do all these sweaters. Once you get it in your mind and, you know, like I say, I'm a, I'm a visual learner. Okay, I got it. I knit up to my arm space. From that point, I knit up to wherever I need to get to my neckline, whatever project I'm working. From that point, I need to get up to my shoulders. And then I get everything equal. Once I get everything equal, then I can start, to, you know, working a neck or something like that and uh, make sure that the two fronts are the same number of stitches so that I can do a three needle bind off when we get to the shoulder. See that? Does that make sense? Okay, so and the back is and then of course we'll, we will have to pick up stitches for the neck and I just did a simple you know just knitting for I didn't knit as many inches as I could because I was trying to get this sweater done so I can get it filmed but you know you're gonna knit a good four or five inches just to get it to roll down really nice and and pretty and back which I will work the same time I'm working the front but on a separate needle separate uh, circular needle see all I have to do is just work up to the arm space and once you get to the arm space, then the arm space, um, you it, it's you decide how many inches you need for your for each sleeve, and that determines how far you go up to get to your shoulders. And of course, you'll bind off a neck right there, really pretty bind off stitches, so it looks nice on the inside. And then we do a three needle bind off, and that is it. It's a really nice fast project it's a beginner project but yet an intermediate would like this because it produces a beautiful sweater and you hardly have to even break a sweat <laughs> so this is Jay's knit after the storm isn't that pretty after the storm lace sweater and this stitch is print of the wave all right, let me get the yarn and the pattern real quick and the book. I'll just run over it real quick. We've already done a tutorial. Did you like that tutorial on Rita Weiss's books? And I put a link down there so you, of course, you, everybody's got their own Amazon. You can go to Amazon or you can go to used book sites or Libras or others. Or I even put a Leisure Art uh, link so that you can, uh, you know, check it out there too. See how many you can find if if you want to like I said but these patterns are basic patterns and they can be found in a lot of other places all right let me get everything set up so I can go over the yarn real quick and we can get started we can start working up our formula okay real quick the supplies that I use I'm not gonna go through a whole variety of supplies I'm just gonna tell you what I use and then you if this is not what you have or you know you can find something that is compatible all right first of all the yarn I'm using I'm just using some yarn that I said I was gonna be working more with this year because it really knits up nice for big box store yarn you can use any yarn you want I'm not a yarn snob so I just like you know whatever whatever floats my boat you know so if you want some hand spun if you but now you have to make sure you get your numbers and do your swatching however you do it because you know I just I this is yarn that I am familiar with my numbers fit I, my needles fit and I'm I'm ready to go all right but this is Deborah Norville's every day this is the anti peeling this is her this is premier yarn and uh, the name of this color is Abergine I think Abergine I guess that's well I just call it deep I call it deep grape or something like that because it reminded me of those grapes in the calendar, the picture of the calendar. So, but you can see it. I hope the camera's showing that color up. So you're going to need, I bought four skeins because I had a coupon or it was on sale. Very inexpensive. So we're not, you're not breaking the bank on this. This is a stash buster again. You know, you probably won't use all four skeins unless you're doing the extra, extra large size or something like that. But 
You probably won't use it, but it's good to have it on hand, especially, like I say, it's inexpensive and it's not going to break the bank. And if you have it in your stash already, like me, it's a stash buster. So there's the yarn. Okay, I'm using Clover US number 8. You would just get whatever is going to go with the yarn that you're going to use. Okay. I am I have two 36 in length number 8s. They're not in the pack because they're in the project that I'm working. So, but I, I keep my packs. <laughs> All my needles have their little homes. I get real upset if I can't find. Well, that lets me know, too, if I have one missing or if I've got one stuck on some yarn somewhere. I know that I have a, a cover that doesn't have a needle. That's just me now. Okay, but I have two number 836. I'm sorry for the glare. I keep moving it. All right. Now, I've learned, like I said, I'm learning as I'm, you know, sharing with you. Now, all I have to do is have two number 8, either 24 or 29 to do the neck. These are too long to do the neck when we get up to the neck. And really, um, you know, it'd be once we separate the front... You know, the left front and the right front, you don't need another 36. You will need, like I say, two number 824s or 829s. It's whatever you can find. Um, there, I keep moving off of glare. I'm sorry, I wasn't even looking at the camera. You know, but that's what that's how, how we'll be knitting from now on these sweaters. Right off the bat, I won't even dally with it. I'll have all my needles all lined up in a row. I'll have two of the long ones, two of the medium sized ones, and I'm good to go. Whatever brand you prefer. Now, the beads, yes, we could crochet the beads into the sweater, but there's so much, um, I just decided to just sew them on because these beads are so small. And I didn't, uh, I'm going just a little bit. No, I'll leave it. Okay, so I simply just, at the end of the sweater, I didn't know where I wanted to place them, so I decided to hand sew them in with some matching thread. Or you can find yarn. You can go to the yarn shop and maybe or order something online that has beads already, but then the whole front will be beaded or whatever, and I, I didn't want that much. I didn't want that much bling. <laughs> so I just, I'm just showing you some that I picked up at Hobby Lobby because they come in these nice little cases so I start buying them there I'd buy them other places but these are nice little cases they're only like $3.99 but with a coupon see they're less than that so I get them really inexpensive two dollars for all these beads and they like I said they come in these very nice little cases and they don't it doesn't come loose or spill the beads but I got these that match my yarn these are bead treasures, uh, six slash O glass seed beads, black rainbow, because it matched my yarn that I already had, you know. So, if you're going to put beads on yours at the end, get these nice little uh, seed beads. But like I said, I had to sew them on because it just couldn't, the yarn just couldn't get through there. There'll be times when we can crochet the beads on, but not on this project. So, I just wanted to show you some beads and where I got them. Alright, now, let's move to the pattern and the formula. Moving right along. Okay, so, just quickly here, this is just a reminder. This is a book we're taking this, uh, this stitch out of. Like I say, if you may have it in another book. It may be by another name. But this is one that I've used a long time because, remember, I've had these books for quite a few years and uh, so I'm very familiar with her and her the one that she wrote up but like I said you can get it off the inner you can get it off the net anywhere but this is Rita Weiss's 50 knitted lace stitches and of course the stitch we're going to use is called print of the wave now I didn't take time I started to take some time and maybe look up a little history just to kind of go through with you but it's easily if you you know if you want to know about where stitches come from or how they got their original name then by all means you know just google it or you know look it up and uh, you know just for those that are interested but this is a stitch that I'm using for my sweater and it is a multiple of 28 plus 2 it's a multiple of 28 stitches 
plus 2. So that equals out to 30. It's like it's really like us putting a panel in this front sweater, in the front of this sweater. So uh, it makes uh, one nice, one nice selection uh, wave pattern right here, right at the center of the sweater. So that's another reason I chose it, and why I made it in a very simple manner, just to, just so that the the stitch will pop out and speak for itself and not have a lot of other stuff and cables and baubles and all of that. Just a nice clean lace stitch right up the front. So that's the book. Now, let me tell you about, I'm going to go through my, before we do our formula real quick, now I'm going to run through. This is my information sheet. You know I've started now, I don't expect you to see this, but uh, you know, we're going to put it on the screen, but I want it to go over what's on the screen once you see it. Let me reset my camera. So I was able to use myself as an example and calculate other sizes. I didn't count all your sizes because I don't know what your body. So what you have to do is sit down, either swatch and trust the swatch, but I would still try to round it off to a number divisible by four, or like I do, like I did, count and see how many stitches and make sure that number is rounded off up to the num next number divisible by four. So for my small, I used 76. I was able to calculate backwards. I represent large. I represent large. So I was able to calculate back for a small 76, medium size 84. My large is 92. This is using a U.S. number 8 now. Extra large, 100. XX 108 X 3X's 116 sizes by calculation it's about an eight stitch difference between each size now on this sheet here that I'm trying you know that I want to just talk about it for a few minutes before you see it on the screen I'm giving you how many stitches for to add to your left and right sleeve everyone will add 11 stitches 11 to the left 11 to the right it represents eight stitches for the sleeve and the three stitch border. So, right there. So that becomes, tw that becomes like 22. All right, the front neck. When we get up to the front neck and we need to bind off, how many stitches should I bind off for the neck, Jay? Well, I by mathematical formula, uh, for if you're small and medium, you will bind off 12 stitches. And the decreases you will need you know, once you bind off 12 stitches, that's not enough. You know, you, you that, that won't make your neck opening large enough. So we have to decrease on this sweater. We're going to decrease on the left side and on the right. So small and medium, you will decrease six on the left, six on the right. And then once we get to the very back of the sweater, we will bind off 24 stitches. I just want you to know what these numbers meant mean. Um... Uh, on the paper because I'm going to be showing you as we're knitting. My large, of course everyone has 11 stitches right and left sleeve, but my front neck I'm going to bind off 14. I'm a little heavy, a little larger so I need a couple more stitches, a little more. And I will also have to um, uh, decrease 7 stitches on the left, 7 stitches on the right of that front neck opening. Does that make sense? In the back of the neck, I will simply bind off 28. So I've gone down and made all of this so that just by calculating so that you will have an idea of, you know, how the numbers will fall. And you see how compatible they are. They're just very compatible because I round them off to the nearest number divisible by 4. Like I said, this is not <laughs> rocket science or anything. And this is not... Um, you know, real intricate knitting. This is very simple knitting. I keep it simple, but I do enjoy and I do like the things that my knitting produce. And hopefully, once you get your numbers and you're satisfied with it, and if you ever pick a size and you see that, you know, then just try not, you know, count or try not to go to the next size. That's all you have to do. I'll go up four stitches, I come down four stitches. Alright, I said all of that so that we can, this will be on the screen. 
I don't even know if that was on camera, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be on the screen. But I wanted you to know when you see it, when it pops up, you're going to go, okay, let me take my time and read through this. She just explained it. Now, the next thing is, well, we need a working formula. You know, I work everything with a working formula. Just a nice little formula that I write up because I work from this one line as much as possible. Okay. I represent the large. Can you see that? Let's see if I'm on camera. Okay, so I represent large. And for my large on my US number eight, remember my base stitch stitches are 90, I had 92 stitches. That's where I start. So I have 92 stitches on my number eight. And remember the first thing I said, once you know how many stitches for your certain needle, then you just simply start subtracting things that you already know. I know that this pattern is, this lace pattern is 28 stitches plus 2, which equals 30. So I can go ahead and subtract 30 stitches from my 92 stitches. I get 62 stitches left over. Well, we have to use those stitches to fill in. Well, fill in on one side of the, you know, we're on the, this is just the front. You have another 92 stitches for the back. This is, see, so you just need to figure out one the front and then the back is automatically you just duplicate that number so 30 from 92 is 62 so if I divide 62 in half okay to split it up I get 31 and 31 so now I can write up my little formula and I don't really have a border so I didn't put B for border but uh, we will eventually use one of the stitches but it's 31 on the left side here is my pattern in the block, 30 stitches, and the last 31 stitches, because we have to use them all, and if you add this up, it comes to 92 stitches. So I've checked myself, check and checkmate. <laughs> Does that make sense? So now when I start knitting, and once I show, once we start on the, on the yarn, this is, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I am knitting in this direction. I will simply cast on my stitches, and um, just and then, like I said, I'll, I'm gonna walk you through that. But I'll have 31 stitches of just plain knitting. Then I'll work the pattern, and then I'll have the other 31 stitches to finish out the row. Does that make sense? <laughs> and I didn't do all of your sizes because I I gave you the size. So all you have to do, if you are a medium, you take 84. And, and subtract 30 and get a number and if that number should come out be able to divide it by 2 if for some reason it didn't then you need to add a number add 1 or whatever to make it an even number that's how simple it works okay does that make sense <laughs> alright um, the next thing is for me to get the yarn we're going to start on row 1 on the bottom uh, edge and row one and I'll be walking you through it
let's get started. All right, I have, uh, you know, I've gone over the information sheet. You've seen the information sheet on the screen. So, now it was up to you to either swatch or as you regularly would or make a long swatch and count your stitches. But I gave you some sizes, you know, to help you, you know, kind of find a place that you could fit. So I represent the large size, so I know to cast on 92 stitches. And once I cast on my 92 stitches, you know, I showed you, I went over my formula. It's very simple. Yours should be very simple, too. It's just, uh, since there's no borders or anything, I have 31 stitches on one side. I have the pattern in a block. That's the 30 stitches for the uh, print of the wave lace. And then 31 stitches to even it out. Now, no, there, there's no, not a border, but now you might choose, I choose to knit the first and last stitch of every row. You might like to slip. You can do either one. All right, now, before we get into working row by row, on uh, my original, on the bottom edge, I did knit two rows, and, um, some of my friends said, well, Jay, I'm having a hard time because it rolls so bad. I believe Lute said, uh, is it Lute said that uh, she, you know, was there anything else she could do? And I said, yes, you could just, instead of two rows, just knit four rows. So on the sample, I've gone ahead and I've started, I knitted four rows. I simply cast on and start knitting. I just knit across till I got, till I did my 31 stitches. We have to pretend a little bit here. This is just my sample, and I put a marker. Now, I'm way up here, but the marker would go down here. I put a marker, and I'd work row one. Row one is the right side. So here's this row one that gives this pretty little edge. And then I'd put a marker on this side. As I finished up this lace pattern, I'd put a marker, and then I'd work the rest of the stitches. I'd just knit across. And then I would continue to knit back and then row two on the pattern, thank goodness, is a purl row. So you don't have anything to worry. You just purl the lace stitches and then go back into yarning back and knit across. And you want to repeat that, you know, you want to work four rows. Once you finish the fourth row, you're on the right side. And now we can go into stockinette, knit on the front, purl on the back. Just that easy. And, of course, work the pattern whatever row you're on continue in the pattern now I have I had to go ahead because I need to be ahead a little bit I had to go ahead and knit two repeats of this pattern and if you look closely you can kind of see how one repeat is here with this pretty edge and then the second repeat starts around here so now I'm going to uh, work the third repeat of this pattern as I stitch row by row and uh, you can stitch along with me, or you can just, if you're new and you just want to watch and see how the stitches, how I work the stitches, that's fine. So, I am on row one. I am on the right side, starting, and I think I said that this pattern had 11 uh, rows, but there's really 12. You have to work the last purl row to have a complete repeat of this pattern. So, right side, I come up to my marker for my, tell, telling me it's my pattern. Row one reads, knit one, knit two. Now here's a sequence. Knit two together, yarn over, and you need to do it three times. Then knit one, yarn over, knit two. Slip, slip, knit. Knit five, knit two together, knit two. Here's another sequence. Yarn over, knit two together, and you do that twice. Then yarn over again, knit two. And since we're only doing this one repeat, you will end with one stitch left, and you just simply knit that stitch for to finish up row one. And of course, then, um, so let's just go ahead and do that now. All right, so here we go. Knit one, okay. Now knit two stitches. Here's the first sequence. Knit two together. Yarn over. You have to do it three times. Knit two together. Oops. 
yarn over. All right, one more. Knit two together and yarn over. All right, now the next thing is to knit one. All right, yarn over, knit two. One, two. Now we need to make a slip slip knit. So you're just going to slip one stitch, then slip the neck. It got turned around. Let me put in all the slip a stitch, then slip the next one. Reach back and knit those two stitches together. Just reach back. See, can I? There you go. Knit those two. Now I need to knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, I need to knit two together. Just simply knit two together. Knit two stitches, one and two. Now here comes the second sequence. This time it is yarn over and knit two together. Yarn over and knit two together. So I'm kind of my way, my, there we go. Knit two together. Okay, now, yarn over, knit two, one, oops, one and two, and then there's one last stitch, and I knit that stitch. I will slide the marker and continue to knit across, just in garter stitch. Knit on the front, purl on the back. And either you can knit the first to last stitch or slip them. It's up to you. All right, let's see what we have here. So now, now I'm starting this repeat. And of course, now row two in all wrong side rows, you will purl all of these lace stitches here in the pattern. Everything else you keep in stockinette. Knit on the front, purl on the back. I will see you back at row three. Well, since we own, we are only working one repeat, it really the front will go rather fast. Now, you'll have to go back <laughs> and still deal with the back of the sweater. But like I said, I took time. If I did a repeat, you know, 12 rows on the front, I'd stop and I'd go do 12 rows on the back. Then I'd come back and do the next repeat on the front. Then I'd go do 12 more rows on the back. So that when I got ready to do the sleeves, we were in, I was in the same place on the front and the back, and that helped me a lot. All right, I'm back, so I'm ready. I'm on the front side, and I'm just finishing working across. Now I'm up to row three of our print of the wave lace stitch. Row three reads, knit one, knit one. Now here's a sequence. Knit two together, yarn over. You, redo, you repeat that three times. Then you'll knit three, yarn over. Knit two, slip slip knit. Knit three, knit two together. Knit two, another sequence. Yarn over, knit two together. And you'll do that twice. Yarn over, knit three stitches, and end with a knit one. So, that seems easy enough also. So, let's go. Let's see. So, we start with knit one, and then we knit one again. Now, here comes the first sequence. Knit two together. Yarn over. That's one. We've got to do it three times. Knit two together. Yarn over. One more. Knit two together. Yarn over. All right, now knit three stitches. One, two, and three. Okay, now a yarn over. Yarn over. Now knit two. One, two. Next is a slip slip knit. Slip two stitches. Reach back and knit those stitches. Put your needle in, knit those stitches, those two, 
All right, now knit three stitches. One, two, and three. Knit two together. Knit two. One, two. Okay, our second sequence is yarn over, knit two together, and you will do that twice. So let's go. Yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then there is, after that, there's another yarn over, knit three, one, two, and three, and end this with a knit one. And of course, finish the row by knitting across. Just like that. And we have finished row three. At least I, you know. That makes it nice and easy because like I said, every row is that row is just purl. So you know you're going to purl on this section and then you purl the lace stitches also. So really you just purl across the row. Except either I knit the first and last stitch or you may decide to slip them. Alright, now row four of course is like I said just purl. So I will see you back at row five. Now we're going to get a lot of yarn over so continue to watch your yarn overs. I'm working up to row six, uh, excuse me, row five of our print of the wave pattern. I'm on row number five right side. Row number five reads, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, repeat that three times, knit five, yarn over, knit two, slip slip knit, knit one, knit two together, knit two, another sequence, yarn over, knit two together, and repeat that twice, Yarn over, knit four, and end with a knit one for row five. So, let's go. Very simple. Knit one. Now the first sequence is knit two together. Yarn over. You got to do it three times. That's one. Knit two together. Yarn over. One more. Knit two together. And don't forget to yarn over. Now, knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, yarn over, knit two. Now, here's the slip, slip knit. Back. Knit those two stitches, okay. Now, knit one, knit two together, knit two, one, two. Here comes the second sequence, and it is yarn over, knit two together. So, let's go yarn over first, then knit two together. Yarn over and then knit two together. One more yarn over. Yarn over. Now knit four. One, two, three, four. And then I, I thought every time I got to this row, I thought I made a mistake. As it's four, I got an extra stitch. <laughs> I always forget to look at that last stitch. There's a knit one on every on every uh, pattern row. So after you knit the four, then knit that last stitch. You know, because it doesn't say knit five, it says knit four, because that would have been a part of a repeat, but we only we were only doing one repeat. So every time I got to row five, I don't know the others, I it was fine, but row five, I was like, oh my gosh, I got one extra stitch. What did I do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> You have to knit that last stitch and of course 
finish this row by knitting across your stocking knit. Knit on the front, purl on the back. And see, it goes really fast. That is row five. Row six is the wrong side. I will see you back at row seven. All right, we're up to row seven of our pattern. I slide my marker, row seven. Read, knit one, knit two. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and do it twice. Then yarn over, knit two, slip, slip, knit, knit five stitches, then knit two stitches together, knit two, yarn over, knit one. Another sequence, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and do it three times, knit two, in with a knit one. Okay, all right, we're making great progress. So, row seven, knit one, then knit two stitches, one, Two. My first sequence is yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and repeat that. Yarn, yarn over. Okay, now slip, slip, reach back and knit. Whoops. Okay, now repeat that. Yarn over, slip, slip, and knit. All right, now a yarn over, just yarn over. Now knit two, one, two, slip, slip, knit, now we're up to knit five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so now we knit two stitches together. We knit two, one and two. Yarn over, knit one. Here comes the second sequence. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and we have to do this three times. So let's go, that's one. Slip, slip, knit. I did a yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Make sure I have my yarn over there. I have it. Yarn over, again, slip, slip, knit. That's two times, one more. Yarn over. Now slip, slip, knit. Okay. Now, knit two stitches, one, two, and of course, knit the last stitch. If you mess up on this row, it's because you left off one of the, uh, one out of the, that three sequence, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. I did that a couple times. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> then you, of course, knit off the row. Now, row eight is the wrong side, and the side we purl on. For all our stitches. I will see you back at row nine. Isn't that pretty? I hope this light color is okay. I'm about running out of practice yarn here. Okay, but I will see you back at row nine. All right, so I am, make sure I have some yarn here. I am on my way to row number nine. Because it's really, I'm moving along now. All right, I'm up to my pattern, my stitch. Remember, we are doing the print of the wave. Isn't that pretty? Now, row nine, of course, is the right side. And it reads, knit one, knit three. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit. And you do that twice. Yarn over. Knit two, slip, slip, knit, knit three, knit two together, knit two, yarn over, knit three, another repeat is 
yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and you have to do it three times. Knit one, and then knit the last stitch. So, the excitement is building. <laughs> as you see, of course, you know, you're working on your first repeat, so you don't see quite as much as I have, but you will. Now that you've got it down, now that we're working our way through the first repeat. So, here it is, knit one. Now, I'm going to knit three. One, two, three. All right. The repeat is on this is yarn over. Now, slip, slip, knit. Okay. Now, you have to repeat that. Again, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, oops, make sure you don't split now, my yarn is splitting here, okay, and slip, slip, knit, I did it twice, now, yarn over, knit two, one, two, now, simply do a another slip, slip, knit. We should have this stitch down <laughs> by the time we get through. <laughs> okay. The next thing is to knit three. So one, two, and three. Knit two together. Knit two. Yarn over. Let's see. Knit. Yarn over. Now knit three. One. Two. And three. Now we're up to our next repeats that we have to do. And it's a yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. And we have to do it three times. So let's go yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. That's one. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit. There's two. One more. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Whew. Oh, I made it. Then the last thing you have to do is knit one. And knit the last stitch. I was always worried on this row that I <laughs> that I'd come up with only one stitch at the end. But there's a knit one, and then you knit the last stitch, just like that. Slide my marker and knit across. Finish the row out to finish up row nine. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Like I say, you're down here, but I can say well, you're gonna you're gonna be working, so don't worry. It's gonna yours is gonna look just as nice, or it may look even nicer. <laughs> I'm giving you a, I'm giving you a pat on the back. <laughs> All right, now we just finished row nine, so row ten, of course, is the wrong side. I will see you back at row eleven, the last pattern row. So. Finish up, hold on, be careful of your yarn overs and slip, slip, knits. That last little uh, repeat has three, so don't forget. <laughs> Just follow it on the screen. All right, be back in a minute. Here we go. Up to row 11, the last pattern row of our uh, lace stitch. Row 11 reads... Knit one, knit four. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and we repeat that. Then we do a yarn over, knit two, another slip, slip, knit, knit one, knit two together. Knit two, yarn over, knit five. Now here's a repeat. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and we repeat that three times and end with a knit one. Oh, gosh, okay. Like I say, you may not be, this is just you coming to the end of your first repeat, 
but you still should be able to start seeing how pretty the stitch will look. Now I've steamed mine a little bit on the back just so that uh, it would show up here while I'm, you know, it wouldn't make any sense if it was all rolled up. All right, let's go. Row 11. The first thing I need to do is knit one. Then I knit four. One, two, three, and four. All right, now I have a yarn over slip slit knit, and I have to do that twice. So let's go yarn over, slip, slip, knit, again, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, okay, then I have a yarn over, and I have knit two, one, two, all right, now here's another slip, slip, knit, slip, slip, knit, then I need a knit one, oops, knit one, knit two together, knit two, one, two, then a yarn over, and I need to knit five. And I did drop a stitch, so I got to fix that. So I'm going to knit one. Now I have to fit, fix this stitch that I dropped. Sorry. I recognize that when I... There we go. So, But I've already done one of the five. Oops. Nope. Got to do it. Wait. I dropped it. Got to put it back on. Just take your time. That's two, three, four, and five. Now I'm up to the next sequence. It's a yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and I have to do it three times. Yarn over, slip, slip, reach back and knit it, and knit. That's one. Yarn over. Slip, slip, reach back, and knit. That's two. One more. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit. And I have one stitch left, and I knit that one stitch. Okay, so then, of course, I just knit off the row. Okay, now I'm going to give you a minute to take your time to get. Now we have to go to, we have to finish row 12. That's the pearl side, so I will do that off camera. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk a minute because uh, on this sample, I'm, we're going to pretend a little bit so that we can go ahead and start adding our sleeves for the next repeat. So I want to show you exactly how to do that. So I'll let you take a minute to finish up row 11, then do row 12, the pearl side, and I will see you back. Take care. <laughs> Don't drop a stitch like I did. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, you finish one repeat. I've walked you through one repeat and did every row. All right. So now... Uh, so that I can get ahead, I, we need to pretend a little bit. So, for me, the next step, after you do the bottom, you know, that's, we work the body up to, the next important thing is to add your sleeves. So, for me, you know, I'm doing the large size, I needed six of these repeats. I had to repeat the pattern six times to get up to my underarm space. I wanted to make sure that I could lift my arm and my sweater and I had just rise way up, you know. So I went up, I made sure, you know, I might, you know, maybe five may have been okay, but I just simply went on up to six repeats so that I, I, knew, I know that I could lift my arm up without my sweater coming all up. Does that make sense? Okay, so after I did six repeats for me, now we're pretending that I am on the seventh repeat and this is where I'm going to add my sleeve. Now read my notes to make sure. Yes. So now I'm ready for the seventh repeat 
and it is row one. Let me make sure I got that right too. Yep. All right, sorry. <laughs> Had to make sure. All right, so to add our sleeves, once you get up to what's comfortable for you, now I'm going to check my camera, make sure that I can, yeah, I don't want it to be too close. I think, let's see. Okay, so add, to add my sleeve, on this side it's real simple. I'm right-handed, so this side is real easy. If you're left-handed, I guess you, you know how to translate and move things. So, every, on your, uh, on the information sheet, every one is to add 11 stitches. You're going to add 8 stitches and then 3 extra stitches for the border on each side of the front of the sweater and each side of the back of the sweater. So that's 22 in all, but 11. So let's go. So I'm starting right here on this edge, and I'm just simply going to knit on these stitches. That's the easiest way to do it. So I just I put my needle in to knit, but I pull up the loop, and I put it around and go in like that. So that's just one stitch. I'm knitting on stitches. I That's one stitch. Pull it up like I'm going to knit. Turn it, twist it around, that's two stitches, and put it back on the left hand needle. That's two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. That's the sleeve. Now I need to put a little edge on the sleeve so that I don't have to go back and pick up stitches when I'm done. So I'm adding three extra stitches, which will make the 11. So let's go three extra stitches. One, two, and three. All right, and you can always go back and check, but I just put on two, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, and one, more, makes eleven. All right, so now you're going to need a couple of little new markers. I'm going to use these little yellow ones, and of course, I am on row one. We're starting row one, and for me, it is the seventh repeat of so here we go. So I'll knit one, two, three. There's the edge stitch. That's going to be in garter. You'll knit that on every row, those three stitches. Place a marker. Now, since I am on row one, of course, I need to knit over to my pattern. And that's what I will do. You just knit right on across. I want to get over just a little bit. I won't knit the whole row again. Just want you to see we just finished uh, you know working this sleeve in the sweater before. Just simple to add it on. Okay, so now I'm going to stop now so that you can see. Now I'm going to work across. This is row number one again. And I will work across the pattern just like I would follow row one. Then I will knit so many stitches until I, ooh, excuse me, I hit the camera, until I get to the edge. And I will see you on this edge to show you how to make sure we add the 11 stitches on this side. All right, be back in just a minute. So I've worked across row one of the pattern. Now I'm on the left side of this, well, looking down, it's on the left side. I'm on the left side and I need to add the same number of stitches for the sleeve on this side. So as I get up to the last 
I'm just knitting across. Now I have one last stitch left. All right, and I'm simply going to do it by simply knitting into the front and into the back. I'm going to knit this one on just like I knit it on the other side. So I knit the stitch and then turn and go into the back of the stitch and knit it. I have added one stitch on this side for my sleeve. I need to add a total of 11. So let's go. So that's one. Now I go back into the last. Every time I go back into that last stitch, knit, then go into the back. So now I've added two stitches. Into the front, into the back. There's three. They'll be a little loose, but that's okay. It, it will all tighten up. And this is really just the underarm seam that will be sewed up so you don't have to worry about anything. So when I lost my count, one, two, three, one, let's see. Okay, one, two. Okay, this should be the third one, I think. If not, we'll, I'll count. So I'm just going to go ahead and add these going to the last stitch. Yarn over, going to the back. Knit the stitch. It's another one added. I've kind of totally lost count. I was talking. <laughs> Do you know something I remember from when I was like in the fifth grade? Tell me things don't stay with children, you know. I remember the teacher. I remember their name and all that, but I won't call all that. But anyway, I like in the fifth grade. I think it was fourth or fifth grade. You know, you're still little. And she, and she told us not to talk, but I was talking. I wanted to talk to my friend that was sitting next to me. And, uh, I, of course, um, I was breaking the rule. And we they had this thing where you'd have to go stand in the corner. And that was my first time I ever got disciplined in school that I remember, you know. And that it made such an impact that I still remember it. I am 70 years old, and I still remember how it felt. I had to go, and they had, back then we had um, paper on boards that, you know, that flipped over. Big, large boards that, and the paper flipped over. And it stood in the corner, so then you you had to go behind that, and you were like facing, you know, a corner of, you know, where the walls come together. And I had to stay back there. Isn't that funny <laughs> that I remember? <laughs> don't ask me what I had to do with this knitting. It just hit me. It just, I don't know. That was so strange. I remember that. I, oh, because I was talking and, <laughs> and I lost count. That's what made me. But isn't that something that you can remember something like that? Oh, man, that was the most, that was just, oh, I remember sitting there. I don't think I cried, but I remember peeping out the corner of my eye and I could see my classmates looking at me standing in the corner <laughs> I don't think my mom ever I don't know if my mother ever found out or not I can't remember I just remember standing in the corner all right so just to make sure we got to do 11 so I, I I was talking and that's what brought that story up so let me count now two four six eight one is nine or right, I gotta get, keep going nine Remember, I have to do 11 total. That should be 10. And I definitely have to count. So I can't remember getting any, any more trouble after that ever. So hopefully that was <laughs> the thing that helped me. All right. I come right here and I see where the end of the sweater was before I start adding. Let's count and see how many we have. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and one makes eleven. So now I can simply turn the work. And let's see if I'm on camera when I turn the work. Yep. So now I can turn the work. And this is the purl side of the work now because we're going to start purling back. So that makes it easy. But remember these first three stitches on the sleeve they're garter stitch so I have to knit every row so I knit the first three right yarn in 
front now, place my marker. Now I can start purling back across the row and across the lace, across all the way to the opposite side. Now I'm going to just do these sleeves and then we're going to stop and then I'll tell you what you need to work up to. So I'm just doing the purl stitch. I've added a sleeve on this side to match the sleeve on the opposite side. And it's a really nice sleeve and it fits good and you just want to make sure you leave and you know go up enough repeats. Don't get tired. Look, don't get tired and get scared <laughs> because you want to be able to lift your arm and your sweater not, you know, crawl up. So I I went like I said, I did the extra instead of maybe five, I went on up to six. And it still fits really nice. But now this is working on the seventh repeat as I get ready to work towards my neck. Okay, let me stop here. Now you see that I've added the sleeve. I'm just going to flip it over just for a second. This is the right side. Let's talk. Now, like I said, we're pretending. You're still down here. You're still working the thing. You just listen to me talk, but, you know, you're working down here. You've got to get up so far, you know, even add your sleeve. All right. Once I added my sleeve, okay, the next important thing, remember, is to find out how many repeats you need to work up, how many more you need to work up to a neckline. Because you need to, we need to be able to stop this pattern. You know, right up, right above the. I always go right above the cleave, my cleavage line. So I, so for me, I had to work. I finished the seventh repeat, where I've added the sleeve. Then I went up one more repeat, number eight. And when I finish the eighth repeat, this is when we're going to bind off the neck. We're going to stop this pattern at the neck. Now, if you're taller, you may have to have more. If you're shorter, but I can't imagine too many people shorter than me. But but this is where we're going. Does that make sense? Does that give you a picture? Is it clear? Now, this is what I do. I finish uh, the eighth repeat for me. Row 12, of course, was the pearl row. So, in order to clean up all my stitches, this is just something, this is just me, something I do, uh, just to kind of keep things nice and neat and easy to work with. If, you know, if it doesn't interfere with a pattern or cause any kind of problem. After I do the row 12, the purl row, then I knit across all the stitches because I've got uh, knit two together. I've got SSK. I've got yarn overs. I've got all these crazy stitches leaning in all directions. Even though I've done a purl row, they still, you know, this helps to even out things and make it look nice and smooth. So I knit across all the stitches. Okay. And, of course, to get back to the right side of the fabric, I have to purl back. So, once I do that, then I'm ready to start thinking about, okay, let me, what do I need to do to bind off for my neck? Well, the first thing you need to do is, well, I've already, on your information sheet, I've already broken down all the different categories that we need to bind off or, or decrease or whatever. This sample that I'm working is like the small size. So this is small. And on that information sheet, I give you a minus 12 stitches to bind off for the neck. Now, in order to find out what how to set it up, you simply start subtracting. Remember, subtracting always works. <laughs> Everyone had 30 stitches between your in your pattern. From my marker here, my red marker to this one, there are 30 stitches from Rita Weiss's pattern. She had 28 plus 2 made 30. I gave you the number of 12 stitches to bind off. Okay? So, all I have to do is subtract 12 from 30. Right? Those are things that I know. And I get 18 stitches left over. Now, I can divide 18 by 2. And I know that I can put nine, I can have nine stitches on this side of the bind off section. Nine. I've already marked it with a little marker. 
And coming from this edge, I'll count in. Always count in. Two, four, six, eight, and here's nine. So I know that these are the stitches that I need to bind off for my neck. And there be, should be 12. But if for some reason you had a mistake and you had one or two too many, don't worry. All we want is this over here equal. Neck doesn't really, it, it won't hurt anything. But let's go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So there are my twelve stitches that I suggest. Like I said, if by some reason you had an extra stitch, don't worry about it. It's fine. All right. So I need to bind off those twelve stitches. Does that make sense? All right, let's start. All right, to bind off, you know we need two stitches. So I Go ahead and I start working the first two stitches of the neck and I reach back and I bind off okay that's one stitch bound off all right let's just go across here's two real loose pull it as you go real loose here goes three Oops, let's see. Wait, I didn't get the whole, I didn't put my needle in the whole stitch here. Ooh, my yarn split. Let's see, can I grab this? Sorry. Here we go. Now, here goes. I'm just binding off. Here goes number four. I hope I didn't lose count. Four. Here's five. Here is six. Keep pulling, tugging, keeping them loose. Seven. Eight. It's ten. Here goes eleven. And I still have one more. This is number 12, so I have to reach over here and bar this stitch to just help bind off that last stitch in the neck. So I just simply bar it and then reach back and bind off. So I have 12 stitches bound off, and let's count to see if we have nine over here. Two, four, six, eight, and the one left on the needle is number nine. Does that make sense? And then, of course, you have to continue on across the row. Let me just put a few more stitches just so I won't forget. Now you just knit on across as you would normally do. And then we're going to separate because we need to uh, free our needle up. And then we'll start working left side, right side, or uh, right front, left front. Okay. There's the neck bound off. And by me putting those couple extra rows, see how nice and neat everything looks now. Now you don't have a mumble jumble up, a bunch of crazy stitches leaning in all different directions. It looks really nice and neat. Hope that's showing up on the camera. So I purl back. Now I'm, since the yarn is still attached to this side, I may as well complete this side and start working. Now let's talk a minute. All right, let me pull, make sure I'm on camera. Pull this back. All right. Now, we have bound off 12 stitches for size small or medium. Well, 12 stitches by itself, and even with the little back that we'll bind off, would not be enough to get this sweater on. You have to put this, you have to put your head, this sweater over your head in order to, to get it on, to wear it. So, now we have to decrease to make the sweater a little wider. It's narrow here, and then we want to open it up a little bit more in this direction like this as it comes up and, and eventually will meet the back of the sweater to give yourself enough room to put your head in and then we'll add a collar of course so in order to do that we need to decrease but let me just walk you through this especially if you're new because this is the part that that can throw you and you just like oh man I was doing so good till I got to this part <laughs> all right when we're looking at the sweater right now, we're looking at the sweater in reverse. When you wear the sweater, you're going to be wearing it 
with this side against your body. So this is the right side of the sweater, right front. Here's the center, and then here is the left front. Does that make sense? Now, as we're knitting the sweater, it's facing us. So everything is just kind of the opposite. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, Jay, you had me at... <laughs> So remember, remember my little trick that I'm gonna that helps me out. I know that this is the left front because if I was wearing the sweater, it'd be on this side of my body. So this is the left front, and for my left front decreases, we want the decrease to slant this direction. We want it to slant like this. Does that make sense? And for the right side front, we want the decreases to slant like this, so that the opening, the neck opening, will go like this, and then it comes around and meets the back. Aha, uh -huh, voila, see? Just need a visual, that's all. <laughs> so in order for me to remember and not to make a mistake, because look, you know, like I said, I'm, it's easy to forget where you are, you're flipping back and forth. Here's the left front. If I had the sweat on, this would be on my left side. Here's my trusty masking tape, left front. My decrease to get it to lean to the right, I'm going to knit two together. Ha ha ha, voila. So I turn it right here. I always like to put them on the back. I don't want nothing on my front. But there it is. Left front, decrease, knit two together. So if that's the left, then automatically this has to be the right. So here's the right front, decrease. And I'm just going to use the slip slip knit. We've used it all the way through this sweater, and that's a nice little decrease. So, and it works just fine. And it leans, it will be leaning to the left of the knit. So, I put that thing. Make sure I got that on camera so you can see it. So, you see, I've got the right front leaning to the left with the SSK. Got it on my masking tape. Now I don't have to try to remember. I have my left front decrease, knit two together, it leans to the right. Now, all right, since the yarn is attached to the, which side? Right front. <laughs> we may as well continue to work it and then come back and work the other side. So I have, like I said, I've switched to my 824. Now, we're going to decrease on every right side row. If you look at your um, information sheet, small and medium, you will decrease six times. So every right side row for six times, you will just knit, what? You will SSK six times. So every right side row, you start out with an SSK and then continue working. Now we're, we're out of the pattern, so you're just working socking it. Now you knit on the front, purl on the back. Keep going. The next right side row, you know, you'd purl back in the next right right side row, SSK. So let me do just a few, just a little bit of it, and then we're going to, because it's just that, it's easy to understand once you've gotten it down. Okay, so here I come. I've already purled back, so now I'm ready to do my first decrease. Uh, I am doing SSK, so knit SSK, then knit. Now I will just knit across because we are done with the pattern. We've sealed it off really nice by putting those two extra rows. It looks real nice. It won't look all crazy with stitches going every direction, yarn overs, <laughs> looking like big holes. It just looks nice. Now you can get rid of this. Oops, let me see. I got a little. Oops, I got to take that stitch out, put it back on. It's split, so I need to do it again. Now I can start getting rid of these markers. We'll need them in just maybe a little bit, but we're going to go on. But I've made one decrease right there. And if you look real close, you may not be able to see it on mine, but you'll be able to see it on yours. It slants to the left. Voila. SSK. But for this opening, I needed to slant that way in this side. Now... You will continue to work until you have all six decreases for this one side, all the way up, okay? Then, of course, you'll come over here, and you can use 
You can stay on this needle or get another uh, 824. And this side. Okay. Now, when we were working, when we came across, we knitted across. Right? So this side, you have to purl back one. You have to purl. So, look. Just for your own information, right here on my little tape, I'm going to say first purl one row or purl one row. Purl, we'll put purl one, purl one row. Well, I messed that up, didn't I? Okay. That's just so, and maybe I'll, you know, you can draw, underline it, whatever you need to do, so that when you come back to this side, you'll know which end, since we have uh, points on both ends. Well, which end do I connect the yarn with, Jay? Well, you just put yourself a little note. You start by purling back, because when we were cut, when we started, we came across, knitting, knitting, bind off, we bound off the neck, and then we knit across. Then I had to purl back. Now I'm ready to, then I did my first decrease by knitting. So, I'm going to purl come back and on this side what do I do I knit two together the last two stitches when I come back I simply knit two together then I purl on up back come back again knit the last two stitches together purl back <laughs> okay you don't like my sound effects <laughs> all right so that's where we're up to does that make sense Get the masking tape, and you won't go wrong, and you won't be confused. Don't try to remember it. Trust me. I'm a seasoned knitter, and even I forget. I always get, because you're looking at it opposite. Okay, you, you're working it. When you wear it, everything lines up. <laughs> this is right, this is left. But when you're looking at it, it's, you know. So, let's get to that point, and um, I will see you back. And tell you the next step. Okay, I have done uh, a lot of the work off camera, of course, so that I could give you uh, a good uh, view of what you should have, you know, after uh, work, after doing your decreases. So now let's talk. Let's just talk a minute. And I ran out of some of my practice yarns. I had to grab up another skein that was kind of close in color, so it's kind of off color, but that's okay. This is just my sample. All right, so... The assignment was, you know, you were decreasing. I'm working on, say, the small size just to save time. So I did six decreases. Remember, we had our little, our little mark here. On the right side, I did six SSK slip slip knit on every right side row until I did my six decreases. Okay. And then on this left front, I did a knit two together. And I did six of those. So now I've finished that and I've maybe knit a couple of more rows. And now we simply need to work up to the shoulders so that we can start, uh, so we can, um, you know, get ready to meet our, our back piece. But you say, well, Jay, how, uh, well, how far do I work? Or how do I know? All right, this is when you, oh, I hit the camera, sorry. From this point on, after finishing the neck, the next important thing is to get how many inches you need for your sleeve opening. Here is, let's see which side is, is closer that I can see best. I think it's going to be this one. Okay. So, let me move this over. Now, that's the next most important thing. After we finish neck, now we concentrate on the sleeve. I know that I need at least nine inches. This is just the front of the sleeve now. From here to the top of the shoulder, I need at least, you know, right at nine inches or as close as I can get to nine inches. Or, this is, a lot of times my measure is not good or I just, I can do this better. Let me just show you. We've done it before. You see these little garter ridges on the edge here? If you have these, I start at the very bottom edge, right there, the very first thing, and then I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I continue on up. 
I know from my own, you know, <laughs> from knitting my own sweaters so long, you know, I've done this forever and a day. I need at least 24 of these ridges to get up to have a space wide enough for my arm to go through. That means it's 24 on the front. That means I need to put 24 on the back. 24 of these ridges. Just keep knitting until you have 24. <laughs> Does that make sense? Of course, if you do the uh, right side or left side, you have to make the other side match. So you keep knitting. This is why I was glad I'm changing now to the double point, uh, the circular needle, because they're not directional. There's a point on either side. So whenever you reach your either inches for your sleeve, you know, if you if you're really thicking the arm up in here, you may need um, you know nine and a half or nine. You know, you may need or you may need twenty six of these little ridges. Just kind of go up by two. You know, I always tell you if you have to increase, increase in increments of two, so you don't go uh, get large. So I know that I need at least twenty four of these. Now on this little sample, I didn't take time to do 24 because I was, you see I'm running out of yarn. I had to get some discolored yarn just to finish up. But for the practice, for us understanding the steps, so I keep working after I finish the decreases on one side. I just continue to work until I have uh, 9 inches or, or close to it or 24 of these little ridges for me. Then I stop. And I stop. When, you, when I stop, I try to stop with the yarn pointing, even if you have to stop one row short, it doesn't matter. I stop with the yarn hanging from the sleeve side because we're going to do the three needle bind off. So, so whatever, however many of these I need or how many inches I, when I'm finished, then the little yarn when I cut it or whatever should be on the side where the sleeve, right here, not on the neck edge. Hence, I move over to this side of the sweater. I do exactly the same thing. See if I'm on camera. Yep. So now I have made the decrease, all of the six decreases for this small. Uh, my large size, I had to make seven decreases. Okay, so then I will count and make sure I have the same number or the same amount of inches. And when I'm through, look. And I'm ready to cut the yarn, whatever. It's off the sleeve side, also. You don't. I don't ever cut it on the neck side, I'll, because I'm going to do the three needle bind off, and I want all my tails hanging on this side of the yarn. And when I attach the yarn to do the three needle bind off, I always attach from the sleeve, work towards the neck. So if there's any problem, it can be hidden in the neck. Make sense? Okay. All right. That's that. Now. We understand how we got to the top of the shoulders, even on this little practice piece. Before we do anything else, once you, you know, once you get to the inches or how many ridges you feel that will, that your arm can, you know, fit on your arm, stop and count your stitches. Count every stitch on this side of your sweater and every stitch on this side. Now on this little sample, and I represent the small, this person had 37 stitches. From the very stitch, from even the edge and everything, count every stitch, because every stitch will have to be matched on the back to do the three needle bind off. We, we can, because we'll, we'll be getting rid of these little markers. But I counted, and it was 37, and I counted again. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. Then I slid it over here, and then I counted this side, and it was 37, and I counted again. So I know 37 is what I need on the back to match up. So now watch. I take the front. Now I'm going to move the back over. And of course, this little back is just a little sample. So, All right, now. All right, first of all, you have got to knit these this sleeve section to the number of ridges. Let me see if I'm on. Yes. Now I'm back. I, I've got the camera really zoomed out so that I can get this on here really good. I'll, I'll come in just a little bit. 
okay because it's so going to be so long so I can show you what I'm doing but all right so I'll work the back to as close as I can to however many ridges or uh, inches so if I had 24 on the front then I'm gonna work up to I have 24 on on the back but right before I see that I'm coming to 24 or whatever number all right we need to stop and count and mark our neck now this is what you need first of all you're gonna need at least two markers see that you're gonna need two markers and when you start counting always count from the edge something that's that is correct and even and everything towards the center so I counted off remember on this sample I had 37 she has 37 I can't remember what mine is right now but you, you know but you don't know what yours is so I count two four six eight ten, and I count all the way to I have 37 because that matches the front and I put a marker there does that make sense I put a marker there. Now, if you look on your um, on the sheet that I provided, your information sheet for this small and medium size, the back neck bind off is a minus 24 stitches. So see that helps right away. You don't have to do any calculation. But if you had to, all you'd have to do is count every stitch and then subtract however many you had on the front on the right side and how many had on the left side and what's left use you know is enough that you will use for your neck bind off my numbers are very compatible because I round them up so you see my if you add if you add the 12 stitches that I decrease for the front neck you add the six stitches on that I decrease on one side of the neck you add the other six 12 and 12 is 24. Well, guess what? It matches up with my back decrease number or bind off number 24. Only because my numbers are compatible. Like I say, it's it's not a very, um, it's a very relaxed fit and it's, you know, maybe some people like more fitted stuff, but you know, hey, at my age, this is, look, I, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm knitting, I'm happy. I got lots of friends on YouTube. Hey, we've got, hey, we got this. <laughs> look, if nobody else don't, look, if nobody else don't like it, look, we got this. Okay, so over here, when you count, when you start counting, always start from the edge. And I counted in 37, so it will match. And that left me 24 stitches to bind off. So now, I see that I, I can go on up another a uh, couple of rows or whatever to get this bound off because I need to be I need to, I want to bind it off on the right side of course so if you have to you know if you be you know if you had to go over one row that's fine it doesn't really matter but you're gonna knit across as you would normally do we get here and we start and we bind off the 24 stitches between these two markers does that make sense and then we continue to knit across and my yarn is there. My needles are, since I'm using now, um, since we've got um, circular needles on every uh, part of the sweater, each side and the back, now it's just real easy. I've got the neck bound off. Now it's really simple to do a three needle bind off. And let's see, can I do get a little of this done? We're not going to do the whole thing because I've done it before and you should be into three needle bind offs now by now. <laughs> don't worry about all these tape this is practice I didn't have time to like I'm trying to get this on this tape <laughs> so it won't be so long all right so now I'm gonna pull I might be able to pull in to do our three needle bind off we have double counted everything bound off the neck now I know that I have the exact amount of stitches on when you three needle bind off right sides will face each other not but not the wrong side but the right sides so you put the right side of the back and then I'm gonna put the right side of this one and I have my yarn already in place or close to it I'm gonna just do a few little stitches I'm not gonna do the whole thing 
and we'll be able to get rid of these markers too I could have got rid of them a little bit a while back let me see hold on I'm kind of working around my camera here this is a long piece but now I think I can zoom in a little bit as we get ready to do this through needle binder okay now let me check it and see where I am all right let me uh, let me reset I'll be right back okay I just reset them so I could get this on here and I'll just do a few stitches cuz I'm not gonna connect it I just got a little yarn here so I grabbed up a little small double pointed needle make it a lot simple than when I was struggling before with that longer needle <laughs> So now what we've, like I said, we've double checked, we've counted, and you simply go into the first stitch on the first needle, go into the second stitch on the second needle, just as, as you would normally do, bring the yarn through both loops, okay, take the stitches off, we have to kind of help it a little bit, don't pull real tight, alright, now you know we need two stitches to work a bind off, so I have to do it again. Up, see that went under that one now I go up under the next one on this needle I bring the yarn around I come through I push them off and I reach back and bind off see on this little short needle it makes it so much easier I don't know why I was sitting over there in the cup all along <laughs> alright let's do it again I don't have much yarn so I'm just going to do a few stitches through both yarn over pull it through the loop we're knitting pull it kind of hip it off the needle now reach back and bind off bring that stitch over okay of course now we can get rid of these markers all right let's go again I'll go to this little piece of yarn is used up there's the first needle there's a second the right fronts are the right sides are facing each other yarn over bring it through the loop push those those stitches off like you normally knit reach back and just like any other bind off we bind off the stitch and we continue to go across one two around come up under push them up and off reach back and bind off pick up do the next one Push them up and off, reach back, and bind off. Maybe I can do one more. One, and go into the second one, yarn over, knit it through that loop, reach and pull them off, reach back, keep it loose, and bind off. That's all I had for that little tail. And then, of course, we have already main thing that we have checked and counted our number our stitches twice so then there is the bind off seam right there okay so I quickly went ahead and did the three needle bind off to finish up the top of the shoulders on each side of this little sample as you can see I ran out of <laughs> practice yarn so I reached in and grabbed some scraps the closest thing so you can see the difference in color but this is just a sample and this uh, of course you wouldn't do that all right so I wanted to show you how we need to finish it up just a quick we've going to work a little roll collar around the neck and I'm right-handed so I like to start at one of the shoulders now the 24 inch will probably work just fine we're just gonna have to squeeze a lot of stitches on here or if you have a 29 the 36 is too long you can't use it for the neck so either a 24 or a 29 if you have it in a size and just stay with the size 8 alright we're trying to maximize everything and use things as we learn how to you know make these sweaters together we're trying to um, how to do it in a you know more efficient way all right so what I have here is all right so I'm starting right here on this uh, this three needle bind off the shoulder seam 
and I'm going to simply go around and pick up stitches all the way around try to pick it get as many stitches well right here at the neck see we're going right into the back neck that is set you go up under each stitch under two strands where I've bound off and where you've bound off so that's easy to do so you just go right up under just like that oops I got something caught here there we go look at the top you can see the two strands on the top and you just knit around to the other seam this is when we'll start trying to uh, let me just move it around all right I'll get around to the other seam and be right back we're picking up stitches along the back edge so every stitch needs to be picked up nice and smooth and easy back in a minute so I've worked my way around the very back picking up every stitch that I've bound off that's the easy part now I'm over to the opposite seam on this side of the sweater of my little sample now on this side from this seam all the way around the front even the front where we bound off and all the way up to the other seam I want you to jam as many stitches in here as you can just go in every place you can make a make a, a stitch I don't want you to try to spread them out or you know count do the like we would normally do if we were picking up um, a button band or something you know maybe three and then skip one no I want you to go into every place I want you to jam as many for this front this is the front of the collar and we need to we need to pick up as many stitches and we will also be increasing so I'm just well I kind of started off rough but now here I go <laughs> so uh, every little place I can find don't try to skip anything like we would normally uh, pick up so I look I'm just jamming as many as I can all the way around in every little place that I can I'm not gonna skip any places I'm gonna put a stitch everywhere I can put one in every little stitch I may have to make up so just get me some stitches in there we need a full we want to have a little more fullness in the front of the sweater the back is set because we bound off those stitches but this front so that we we'll have a nice little roll every place take your time I had to cut my yarn there okay I'm just looking for a place to poke that needle in pick up a stitch and you can tell when you're picking up a lot because it starts it will get tight because you're picking up a lot of stitches all right, I will see you around as you go all the way around to the opposite side, the opposite seam, picking up these stitches. Okay, see you back when you get to the other where we started. So I've picked up stitches back to the place where I started and at that point I put a marker so that will it reminds you where the round begins. See I just stuck a color marker right there and now I'm continuing to go around the back of the neck one more time just now I'm actually knitting the stitches. I finished picking up I put a marker now I'm starting my first row I'm going to knit around but we're going to increase the front when I get over to when I get past this back this back neck section so I'm just knitting let's see if I can get it on here see it's a little tight with this uh, smaller needle 29 gives you a little more room but we're trying to use what you have until you're able to 
you know, see that you're going to be working with sweaters or work to make yourself, you know, some kind of top where you're going to need that size. So I'm just working around till I get past the back section. I want to keep it every stitch. I just knit into every stitch that I've already picked up. See, I've already picked them up. Now I'm just knitting till I get to the opposite. Now this side I had a little. I will have to fix this hole, but I'm going to go ahead and just knit. And then I will come back and do any repair work at the end. Okay, so now I'm up at, I've gone around the back, and I'm on the opposite uh, shoulder seam right there. This is where we're going to start increasing. We need to increase the front from the seam, the shoulder seam, around all the front stitches to the next shoulder seam. Okay, on this row only, we are going to increase. So, I don't really... I'm not going to re really worry about counting. I'm simply going to start right here and knit two stitches. One, two, and then into the next stitch, I'm going to knit into the front and into the back. I'm not going to count them or anything. I just want to increase it. And then I knit two more stitches. One, two, and then in the next stitch, I knit into the front and into the back. Okay, I knit two more stitches, one, two, then I'll have to kind of pull up, slide them around so that you can get them close to the point. You can pull up a loop, pull this loop up a little bit too. The yarn will stretch and you will, okay, I'm up, to, I've knit two, so in this stitch I'm going to knit into the front and into the back. I'm increasing the front section from uh, shoulder to shoulder around the front of this sweater. Knit two more stitches. One, two. Now knit into the front and into the back of the next stitch to give me some neckies. Knit two more. Boy, these new bamboos are so sharp man they're just tearing my finger up <laughs> okay now into the next stitch knit into the front and into the back okay i'll see you when we get up to the mark continue on knit, knit two more then knit into the front and into the back all right i'll see you when i get to the marker we're increasing the front neck. Okay, so now we have a neckline to work with too. Now, since this is a small size, the 24 seemed like I was able to get around. Uh, if you get into the XX or 3X size, you may have to have the, I don't know if you, you may need the 29. But you want to try to pick up as many stitches in the front as possible. And then we have this one increase row that I ju we just finished. All right, so now I've finished the increase row. I came back to my marker again. Now this time I'm just going to knit just like we make that little tube uh, neck. Now you just knit around and around and around and around. Everything should be smoothed out now that we've done a lot of the increasing and it should kind of go a little faster so this small size I was able to get it on the 24 so if you have a 24 try it first if not then see what you if you need more if you need uh, you know a little larger than you go to 29. All right, so here we go. I'm just knitting, and of course, I'm going to stop now. And uh, at the end, you may have to repair a hole or something on this little sample. I had a hole, I, I think. I don't know if I dropped a stitch or what. 
I didn't have that on my original. Now I'm going to go to the original. And so now we are making the tube. So, I, yeah, I think I, I, I think I used a 24 on this. I think I was able to use that. Anyway, you're just going to go around and around and around and get it as tall as you can. So now don't, don't give out before you put in a pretty collar. Um. Uh, I normally go at least five inches if you're tall or larger or whatever. You can go six inches. And then, of course, you're going to do a loose bind off. Just bind off really nice and loose because this, this is going to roll up. And you're not going to see that. So once you get it to the uh, height you want, the length you want, then you're just going to simply bind off real loose. Use larger needles or like I use that uh, double pointed. Use something large to kind of help you keep it loose. Last but not least, the beads. The beads. Let's see if I'm on camera. These are the beads, like I said, I got at Hobby Lobby because they're such a good buy. And they come in this nice case. And I don't have to worry about them spilling everywhere. I just took regular thread to match my yarn. And I decided, see, I, I didn't know where I wanted them. So I started on the outside points. Just out wherever there was a point, whether it was in point, out, in, out, in, out, in, and so forth. And I took my time and sewed a bead all the way down. Then I decided, well, I may as well do um, go on and do the inside point. So anywhere I could find a, a nice little point on this side of the wave. You can see the beads all the way down. Then I had to, then I simply duplicated it on this side, starting with the points, out, in, out, in, just kept going. I just sewed all of them on there. Then I thought, after I'd done all that, I thought, it looks a little vacant, a little empty in the center. So I picked up about four beads on the needle and I put them just down the center, right where the waves kind of cross each other like that. I stuck some beads there. Just four or five beads would look really nice coming right down the center. And voila! <laughs> Another one in the books. <laughs> well, I tested myself on this one. It wasn't hard. It's just, you know, like I say, it's a lot of work. But the satisfaction, if you don't believe me, Ask my friend Luce. She just finished her first sweater. You go, girl. <laughs> she sent me pictures. Um, she did the very first sweater I did, the uh, dishcloth, you know, from a square to a sweater. And uh, so I told her I was just, I'm just so happy for her. I'm proud that I will be able to put it in my next friendship album. Hopefully it'll be around Thanksgiving or something like that. So I can have a little rest. <laughs> But now, Luce, don't stop. Once you finish one, the, the thing of it is, now look, I'm 70. And I know, but you know, I know a lot of you are still working, and so you have to just knit when you can. But don't stop. Don't just do one, okay? Say, so, okay, to hone me, my skills. This is how I taught myself. After I finished one, if I did, of course, you don't have to make the same sweater, but it's the process. Start at the bottom, get the arm. Know how to add the sleeves. Go up. Now we know how to do a uh, the other sweater. We know I showed you how to do a collar. We know how to pick up stitches. It's practice. That's all it is. They they just you just practice the whole step formation over and over until you have it down. You have your numbers now. You know what kind of fits. You know about how many of these ridges you need to go up or how many inches. You know all of this. I on my information sheet. I'm giving that to you. Those are numbers that if you can find yourself in one of those slots, then you just use those numbers over and over. <laughs> Why get new numbers when you just use the same one? We just get new yarn, a new stitch, and look. And find some more new friends and just have fun. We have fun, but we get things done. So, this is Jay. This is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. Thanking you so much for your fellowship and the time, and I hope that you give this a try. 
I am so happy to share it with you. And until we meet again, happy knitting. Oh, I guess I better get some crochet up too, Bethany. <laughs> For my crochet inspire me. <laughs> See ya.